सो आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग द दिल्ली पोल्यूशन फ्रॉम जियोलॉजिकल परस्पेक्टिव सो वट वी आर सींग फ्रॉम लास्ट टेन डेज और सो ऑलमोस्ट एवरी ईयर इन दिस नवंबर वी सी अवी पोल्यूशन इन दिल्ली सो द पीपल आर ब्लेमिंग द some people are blaming the punjab government some are blaming the haryana government while others are blaming the uh, delhi government however i uh, i will try to uh, discuss this delhi pollution from geological perspective so pollution what does pollution mean pollution is the presence of chemicals or compounds in air which are suspended in air beyond the permissible limit similarly smog is the another term which often comes in debate it is the deadly combination of smoke and fog and nowadays we used to hear what is particulates particulate matter we represent it with an abbreviation of pm also so this particulate matter is actually the microscopic solid or liquid matter that is suspended in the air and often we use a term what we call aerosol so aerosol is actually the combination of solid plus liquid these terms actually come in our you know day to day uh, discussion now uh, we we often see the pm 10 what does this pm 10 mean and we often see this pm 2.5 what does this pm 10 mean what does this pm 2.5 mean so this is actually the size of the particulate matter is the size of particulates so pm 10 means when the particulate size is from 2.5 to 10 micrometer and pm 2.5 means when the particulate size is uh, less than or equal to 2.5 micrometer so what is the problem with this pm 2.5 and pm uh, 10 the problem is that this size is actually able to penetrate deep into the lungs and blood streams uh, the unfiltered which actually then brings the respiratory diseases and heart attacks and so on so unfortunately uh, if we see the world health organization survey among 1600 cities in the world delhi is the, the delhi air quality is worst it is worst among the top 1600 cities this is the survey of world health organization and now this i will be discussing from the geographical or geological perspective if we see the geographical location of india if we see the geographical location of india and particularly if we see the geographical location of delhi and the adjoining area you can see here in the map within india where does this delhi lie it is in the north east of thar desert north east of thar it comes in the north west of northern plains and then it comes in the south west of himalaya south west of himalaya so delhi and the adjoining areas there is thar desert there are northern plains and there is himalaya in the uh, north of delhi north east of delhi that is why delhi comes in the south west of himalaya so what actually happens if the winds come from the coastal areas say bay of bengal or arabian ocean these winds come from the coastal areas and they arrive to the northern plains let us say delhi they arrive to the delhi along with lots of pollutants when these winds reach the northern area the himalayas do not allow them to go through so there is a one directional uh, flow of air the himalayas do not allow them to go through and this air actually does not escape himalayas do not allow this air to escape so this air actually accumulates in the northern plains of india so this is the first geological or geographical issue of this delhi then if we see uh, exactly the delhi 
if we see the south india the south india does not have the continent continuity either on west or north or south there are oceans in both east west and south however the northern areas the delhi and the adjoining areas we don't have any ocean on the south we don't have any ocean on the east on the west or on the north right from the north africa this is the north africa then this is the middle east then we have like iran afghanistan pakistan uh, northern india and china this is a huge land mass uh, which is going from west to east so my point is that in delhi we don't have any oceans around it is it is the part of a huge you know land mass from which goes from west to east so the areas are actually arid they are comparatively dry the winds do come over from the north africa through saudi arabia iran iraq afghanistan pakistan and they those winds also reach to delhi these winds are dust laden what we call western disturbances so apart from the winds which come from south or uh, southwest the himalayas do not allow them to pass and second issue is the winds that come from the west they also reach to delhi and the adjoining areas what we call westerlies so these winds what happens when these winds reach to the delhi their energy decreases and they are unable to move forward so point is that these winds actually in and around the delhi they become stagnant <coughs> now if we see what happens immediately Uh, around the Delhi, when these winds come from north west, there are within a radius of three hundred kilometer from Delhi, there are around fifteen thermal power projects, power plants which are using fossil fuels. They also emit huge of you know pollutants, particularly sulphur dioxide. That also comes to the Delhi and adjoining areas through westerlies. And uh, now there are certain things that we need to discuss from geological perspective that is the effect what is the effect of this pollution uh, on the you know uh, in in geographical perspective let us see its effect first effect on the clouds what happens to the clouds when such a pollution is there in the delhi so there are major two effects that i will be discussing one is what we call albrecht effect Albert effect. What happens in this effect is that uh, the lifetime of the cloud gets increased. How this lifetime of the cloud gets increased? When a lot of pollutants are in the atmosphere and there is a fixed amount of water droplets, what we call cloud droplets. So when I give extra, extra, extra pollutants to the atmosphere, the the water droplets gets you know. uh divided actually what happens why is there a rain, rainfall there is a cloud droplet this cloud droplet actually increases in the size during the process of condensation during the process of condensation this cloud droplet increases in the size and finally it falls down as a rainfall so now if i give extra pollutants if i give extra pollutants which act as condensation nuclei which act as condensation nuclei so this same mass of cloud which was there in one nuclei the weight will increase and this uh, water droplet will come down now if i am giving the extra pollutants this is actually getting divided so this will be a small cloud vapor this will be a small cloud vapor there will be a cloud vapor there will be a cloud vapor this cloud vapor will not grow because there are lot of pollutants available which will act as condensation nuclei and which will not allow a particular cloud nuclei to grow and fall down so what is happening actually we are increasing the lifetime of a cloud if the lifetime of the cloud increases there will be suppressing to the diesel so rainfall will not take place you might have seen from last so many days despite this much of cold we are unable to see any uh, you know uh, good amount of rainfall in delhi or adjoining areas and second thing is what we call tomay effect what happens in tomay effect the scattering takes place 
so there are so many pollutants in the atmosphere the radiation that was supposed to reach to the surface of earth it get scattered uh, from the top atmosphere so when this radiation gets scattered back it does not reach to the surface of earth therefore it increases the albedo albedo means the uh, amount of radiation reflected back so albedo of atmosphere gets increased that is why we call it uh, this effect is actually called tome effect this is the another effect of the pollution then another thing is let me see the effect of vegetation effect on vegetation when there are these much of pollutants in the atmosphere the stomatal opening of the uh, of the leaves of plants get closed there is possibility of closing the stomatal openings so this will this is actually interfering with the photosynthesis this is how the these pollutants play a uh, effect effect the vegetation as well then uh, then comes the <coughs> so another effect that we will be discussing is the thermal uh, thermal inversion or this is the one of the cause thermal inversion or uh, what we call uh, temperature inversion and sometimes we call uh, atmospheric lid also atmospheric lid so actually the problem is uh, is definitely with the source of pollutants that we have seen thar desert this and that but the main problem is with the stagnant air stagnant air there is pollution in other parts of india also there is pollution in chennai also but air is not stagnant but why this deadly pollution becomes so deadly the reason is the stagnant air so the direction of the air and its velocity definitely uh, decides how much pollution is going to be there in the area if we see in the summer the 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 velocity of the wind is usually 6 to 9 meters per second in the areas adjoining delhi however in winter it comes down to 1 to 3 meter per second so there is a decrease in the velocity of the uh, wind so there are several reasons why the velocity of the wind gets decreased that much one of the reason is the thermal inversion so what is this thermal inversion what is temperature inversion right from the childhood we know what is lapse rate lapse rate is actually higher we go cooler it is when we move from the surface of earth Uh, towards the you know top of the atmosphere the temperature goes on decreasing what we call normal lapse rate we call it normal lapse rate which is 6.5 degree per kilometer in a 1 kilometer mein 6.5 degree temperature decrease ho raha hai <coughs> if we have 26 degree temperature here normal lapse rate means after 1 kilometer we will be having around 19.5 degree temperature but what is temperature inversion so if the normal lapse rate says like graph will be like this the temperature will go on decreasing if this is the temperature curve and this is the altitude so along the you know altitude the temperature goes on decreasing this is what we call normal lapse rate but what happens in the thermal inversion when the temperature inversion takes place that this temperature goes on increasing where we go about this is what we call thermal inversion the temperature actually decreases so what the temperature actually increases so there is cold air here about this cold air there is warm air this warm air acts as a lid on this cold air so when there is a lid when there is a cap on the cold air this cap will not allow this cap will not allow the convection currents if there are convection currents these pollutants will rise and they will get dispersed to the other areas but because of this lid the warm air above the cold air it is not allowing any type of convection current in the atmosphere this is one of the major reason now why this thermal inversion takes place there may be several reasons one of the major reason is like uh, the the warm front and the cold front this this warm front goes into the region of cold front being lighter it goes and rises 
above the cold front so there will be cold uh, cold air below and warm air will be above it then this thermal inversion takes place by ocean upwelling also if there is upwelling of the ocean it will immediately decrease the temperature of you know surface air but the above the above surface air will be warmer like california coast is one of the best example but what happens in the delhi actually when the radiation when the radiation from the surface when the radiation from the surface exceeds the amount of radiation received received by the surface so if we have a surface uh, if we have the surface of you know delhi and adjoining areas like this the received radiation and the emitted radiation this radiation actually exceeds the receiving radiation when this radiation exceeds there will be a uh, colder uh, air in this area while there will be the warmer air above it so this is the reason of thermal inversion in the delhi and adjoining areas so this this is actually suppressing the convection it will suppress the convection it will suppress the convection when convection is not there the pollutants will be trapped the smog will be trapped close to the ground that is what we are seeing from last so many days so now uh, the people are actually blaming the haryana and rajasthan areas what is happening here there is the stubble burning yes the stubble burning actually adds to the originally what i what i used to say a geological or geographical or meteorological misfortune so delhi is actually a geological or geographical misfortune now being the misfortune like this this stubble burning actually adds to the you know already existing fire and the worrying thing is that in 2019 there is a 40% increase in stubble burning there is 40% increase in the stubble burning that took place this year actually what is the reason of stubble bur burning one should know this back in you know early 2000 like 2002 2003 2004 or 5 we used to have manual harvest farmers will go to the field and they will cut the crops right from the you know ground if this is the ground and there is a plant Uh, like paddy plant something like this they will cut it from here this used to be like 4 feet or 3 and a half feet and they used to cut it from here so absolutely no hay no uh, you know stable will be left on the ground but this manual harvest was changed into the automatic automatic what we call mechanical mechanical harvest what happens in this mechanical harvest if we have a paddy plant like this and this mechanical harvest it cuts the plant here it cuts only this area where the grains are there so 2 <coughs> to 3 uh, feet uh, stubble is left on the ground so the the easiest way to remove this stubble is to burn it but there can be like farmers need time to you know cut it again from the ground that is the only thing that the farmers can do but in 2009 the government of punjab haryana and other states they came up with a regulation which actually made it very deadly the present scenario in the delhi yes the reason is the stubble burning but what happened after 2009 is that the government came up with some regulations what were the regulations that the sowing of seed yani jo seed hum uh, we we jo hum seed uh, sow karte hain there used to be water issues during that time in april and may so what government uh, bought up some regulations let us post on the seed sowing so when there is the seed sowing uh, you know process is getting postponed by say one month the harvest will accordingly get delayed so there is a delay in the sowing and it there will be a delay in the harvest also 
So in, earlier the harvest used to be in the October. Now the harvest is in the late October or early November. But the next crop, we, the farmers are supposed to start the next crop. By November they should start the next crop. So if there is now next crop, there is the harvest of this crop and next crop, uh, we are going to uh, sow the seeds of next crop within the next 10 to 15 days. So farmers have least time in the hand and they go and burn the stubble. So initially the government tried to save the water crisis. So they did it well. They saved some, uh, you know, water crisis. They responded to the water crisis, but it added to another problem, what we call the stubble burning. The farmers have very less time from one harvest to the sowing of another uh, crop. They have very less time in the hand. That is why they go and burn the uh, stubble, uh, which actually takes minimum time. So this, this, these are the issues. If we see from last few years, the other sources of pollution in Delhi have decreased like firecrackers, burning of firecrackers has abruptly decreased and we have witnessed it. Then the, the, uh, uh, the Badarpur power station was, you know, closed last year, which was uh, again the source of the pollution. And yes, the government is taking certain steps. However, what things are very much complicated presently things are not in our hands so what we can do as a preventive measures we can use the n95 masks we can put some indoor plants like uh, aloe vera etc they uh, you know uh, help us in purifying the air and then we can uh, you know pressurize the government and media so that they can bring some comprehensive uh, solutions like Clear burning is one of the solution and so on. Thank you very much for watching this video.